In 1941, Jan Stenfenech won the competition to design a new station. And although the building of the station had to wait until the end of the Second World War, I think we can agree it's lovely. This beautiful monolith of a building is flanked by Franciszek Gibala's huge statues of a lumberjack and a metal worker. Right, let's get inside for more delights. The impressive entrance concourse is 10 metres high and features a wonderful socialist realist stained glass window that was added in 1959. And frankly, this was the main reason I wanted to start my journey here today. In the concourse opposite the ticket office there's just a small food outlet however as the terminal shopping centre is right across from the station this isn't really a problem. Right we need to cross under the railway to reach our platform for today. Isn't the subway in beautiful condition I really hope they never change this. Our train's up on the display board so let's pause here and have a look at our route for today. We'll spend a long time following the river Hron as it drains down to the Danube southbound to Zvolen and then on through Jarnovitsa and down to Levice and then we'll have to wiggle across country through Podhajska and Shirani before we finally pick up the main Budapest to Bratislava line at Palarikova and then it should be a fairly fast run through to Bratislava. The distance of our journey today will be 230 kilometers or 143 miles and we're scheduled to take a leisurely 3 hours and 46 minutes. This is confusing. The platform says the train is going to Bratislava, but it's actually a connecting train to Zvolen, where you then change for Bratislava. I was not expecting to see a two-car class 861, as it's supposed to be the R838 Erpine, but apparently that train will only start at Zvolen. Well, this service is really busy, and that's not surprising, as this two-car DMU is connecting with a much bigger train at Zvolen. We'll be following the river all the way to Zvolen. And as we track through Zvolen, we get a lovely view of Zvolen Castle. The young chap sat next to me, who was returning to college in Bratislava, told me not to worry as the connecting train will be waiting across the platform, and he was perfectly correct. Right, I was just checking my coach number and I thought, you know what, let's not faff about on the platform. And as we get on, even the window markers say this train should start at Banská Bystrica. Right, this first coach is compartments of six and they look pretty nice. And this one feels a bit more modern and it is much busier. Mind you, when it comes to coach classification, that's my kind of classification. Ooh, there's a powered door. Should be a newer coach. And yes, a nice open saloon in a 2 plus 2 format. And I think they use the same seats that you can find on the Class 861 DMU that we just got off. There's room at the end of these open saloons for five bikes to hang up and I do like the groove on the back of the flip-up seat. And it's nice to see that ZSSK has a family coach. And then one of these strange kind of open double-sized compartments. And we're finally at the front in my first class coach. And it looks pretty nice. Up this end of the coach the bays of four are separated by smoked glass dividers which gives it a kind of office feeling really. And up the front is our ZSSK Class 362 electric locomotive, which was built by Skoda way back in 1990. It's got a top speed of 140 kilometers per hour, but I don't think we're gonna get close to that. Anyhow, let's have a closer look at my seat. The table flips up for easy access and it reveals a fair amount of leg room but that is quite a hefty support leg. You get a personal bin under the table and this one is spotlessly clean. There is power but it's behind the curtain and fairly high up. There's plenty of room on the ample luggage racks which also feature a reading light. And as you'd expect on the outside there is a retractable armrest. I know it doesn't look posh, but overall it's a pretty comfortable seat and it needs to be because I'm going to be here for the best part of at least four hours. And as I'm in first class, the guard brought me a free bottle of water. Coming from the UK, I must say, 
I never really got used to Slovakia's really narrow platforms. I always had a feeling that I was very exposed. Just outside the station, we come to a stop. And now we wait. And wait. In the end, we sat here for a full 50 minutes. A single car DMU was sent up the line and returned, dragging another one, so I can only guess that the stricken one had failed in the single track section ahead. I'm impressed with Yalla station. It also has a pub that overlooks the river. Nice. The Hron is looking really pretty, even though it is one of those January days when it never seems to ever get properly light. Well, we're going to be on here for hours, so we really can't get away with avoiding a quick toilet tour, can we? Well, first up, the door proved very difficult to lock. But apart from that, what a lovely, clean and working toilet this is. Well done, ZSSK. Well, at last it feels like we're making progress, but the track is still pretty rough. As you can see as I try to hold my camera still over the phone. We're not even beating the lorries on the dual carriageway today. Many of the stations in Slovakia have been really pretty, and Janovica is no exception. What a gem. And we're treated to two people on Sentinel duty, not just one. Let's all give the Sentinel a wave. I've asked this before on my travels around the Euphormia Czechoslovakia. What's the reason for the person in the red hat? Along here, the line speed is as low as 60 kilometers per hour. Not that we are actually managing anything close to that. Still, it's quite pretty. I've just noticed there are ski racks in our coach just by the door. And don't get excited by seeing multi-tracks, we'll soon filter back down to just one. We go south here as the northbound line leads to Zlaté Moravce. And once again we cross our old friend the River Hron. Just outside Levice is the home of the 13th Mechanized Battalion of the Slovak Armed Forces. Levice, Station. Levice is another one of these busy little junction stations. And after the station, we turn off west, away from the river Hron, towards Bratislava. And at Kalnar nad Hronom, we finally bid goodbye to the river Hron. For the first time, I noticed the station at Beja seemed to have the name in two languages. I'm guessing this is because we're now fairly close to Hungary. Podhajska is famous for its thermal pools. It's interesting to note that since Zvolen, including me, there's only been two first-class passengers on the Hull coach. I used to live in Hull, but not this one. Shirani is a major junction station where our east-west line crosses a north-south line. Oh look, there's a pub at this station too. 
and we peel off west to Bratislava. And after a short while, we finally join the Budapest Bratislava main line at Palarikovo. And I can hear our locomotive finally accelerating to a decent speed, or what counts for speed round here. And we cross the River Var, which I last saw when I was in the Tatra Mountains a few days ago. Well, Shalya looks lovely in its pastel blue attire. It looks very warm and welcoming. And apparently Shalya was made a city in 1536, making it the oldest city in present-day Slovakia. Galanta gets a lot of train movements as it's served by commuter trains to Bratislava, it's a junction for some minor lines and is also served by long-distance trains such as ours. As we arrive into Galanta, we are now a full hour late and I can see no prospect of making up any time. But at least the seat has been comfortable and we are now on much smoother track. And we're not hanging about now. Well, it's been fun, but I'm ready to be there now. And we're finally here, an hour late. And it's always worth noting that whilst this isn't the quickest train in the world, my first class single costs just 16 euro or 14 pounds and 10 pence. So it's still pretty good value. Right, let's be on our way because it's cold here tonight. This pedestrian subway does look a lot like the one we left at Banska. Hang on a minute, what are these things on the wall? They look funky. Anyway, I mustn't get distracted. I could do with something to eat and maybe a pint or two. Here we are at Vlatislava Halavna Stanika and we're an hour late and we're on the slowest fast train I've been on for quite some time creeping along at about 60 kilometers per hour on large portions of this single track journey. However, first class seats were pretty comfortable in the aged, um, in the aged coaches, but yeah, it was fine. It was, uh, it was okay. The, um, the actual passenger comfort side was fine. It's just um, maybe do a little bit more 120 kilometers per hour on the way. That would be great. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little run between um, Banská Bystrica and Bratislava. And if you have enjoyed it, then give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel as I release a new video every Friday. But now from Bratislava, goodbye and thanks for watching. And here we are at Bratislava Halavni, Halav and here we are at Bratislava Halan Halavni. Here we are at Bratislava Halavni Stanika. Stanika. Here we are at Bratislava Halavna Stanika. Here we are at Bratislava Halavna Stanika and we're an hour late.